the worst thing you can do when somebody's foreclosing is to do nothing. People just need to know there's no shame in this. The heroes are the people that stand up and figure something out and do something about it. Wall Street crumbled, Big Brother stumbled, Detroit blundered. The world wondered, what are we doing? Why we here is our way of life gonna disappear. I love practicing law. I particularly love practicing law now. This practice of representing homeowners in foreclosure, taking on the biggest banks in the country and what we call the tall building lawyers downtown. Anybody who looks at foreclosure defense as being available or not available uh, doesn't understand how to defend a, a lawsuit in the state of Ohio. Each case is driven by the very specific facts of the case. I mean, we have raised defenses of everything from, from the lack of a, a proper acceleration of the loan to the fact that, that, uh, that companies like HSBC and Beneficial uh, have arbitration clauses in their contract, which they're going to hold the consumer to, but they don't hold themselves to. They go ahead and file suit without, without using the arbitration provisions of their contract. You've got issues where there's inaccurate accounting, where people really aren't even in default, uh, which is a defense to, to, to a foreclosure. Um, but there's a path for almost every homeowner to, 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 to litigate these cases if necessary. What, what happens is that people, until the Supreme Court weighs in, then everybody is governed by their own judicial district, and there are 12 of them in Ohio. Particularly in the world of judicial foreclosure, 90% of life is showing up. Still today, even with all the information that's out there about the fraudulent practices of these banks in foreclosing and about the problems with these loans and, and about the possibility of homeowners uh, getting loans modified and getting money, uh, even getting checks written to them for the mistakes that the banks have made, more than 90% of the foreclosures filed in this state go undefended. Uh, they go to default, the, the bank takes judgment, and, and that's where it becomes very difficult. When we get a client who comes into us when the sheriff sale is scheduled or after this has already gone to judgment, you know, it's like we're throwing a 90-yard pass in late in the fourth quarter. If you're a football fan and you understand that, you'd rather have the whole game ahead of you and the ability to grind out that yardage than to have to throw Hail Mary passes. Now, there, there are some courts, brave judges in Ohio, who have ruled that, that if there's been fraud in the process, and in many cases there has been, that it's reasonable to reopen that case and take another look. Um, and about half the courts in this, half the judicial districts in the state say that. But believe it or not, half the judicial districts, they're saying if a, if a lender can commit a fraud and perpetuate that fraud for 28 days and the homeowner who they sue doesn't answer, then they're off scot-free. That they, they, can, they can never be held accountable for making that misrepresentation to the court. Um, well, that's just wrong. Some of the bad case law that's, that's arisen has come from people who were representing themselves. I mean, that's, that's a real problem. Uh, because they don't properly put the, put the information in front of the court to make, to make that decision. What you need is somebody who's totally up to date on what's going on all over the state. And to know when to, uh, as they say in Las Vegas, to know when to hold them and to know when to fold them, to know when to go and, and seek out a modification and try to work something out that's going to make sense for you when you, don't, when, when you may know something about your case that the other side doesn't know that will give you an even bigger edge. We would prefer clients would contact us as soon as they're in default or as soon as they get a notice from the bank that they're in default. Because many people get a notice from the bank that they're in default when they may not be. The bank may be mistaken about whether they have insurance on the house and put on something called force place insurance, which immediately puts the loan into default. Certainly if they get a letter accelerating their mortgage, they should, they should, they should be in touch with us. But really, in Ohio, there's a 30-day acceleration provision, so almost every mortgage requires that there be 30 days notice before the, uh, of acceleration of the mortgage, meaning, meaning that somebody has to have been in default for a while. The bank has to declare the whole note due, and then the, then the, then the homeowner has 30 days uh, minimum to redeem it. Oftentimes, even after that letter is sent, the bank will wait months and even years to file a foreclosure case. And then once a foreclosure is filed, many people think that's the end, but really it's just the beginning. Because once the foreclosure case is filed, then we uh, usually take a 30-day leave to plead. Uh, we then enter, an, enter an answer or a motion to dismiss that complaint. And we've had a number of cases that have been dismissed uh, because the lender couldn't prove they had the right to be in court to pursue that mortgage. And as, as astonishing as it is to, to somebody who's not a banker or, or a lawyer, these banks with their $1,000 an hour lawyers didn't do the proper paperwork. 
zombie title is a mortgage that's in default. Sometimes where the homeowner has just moved has moved out, doesn't even live in the house anymore, uh, but the house is still titled to that person, and and, and there's uh, nobody to cut the grass, pay property taxes. The, the neighborhoods go bad. Eventually, there'll be a property tax foreclosure. Um, sometimes there, there are houses that have gone to foreclosure, um, and the banks have title, and they allow it to sit and not get resold, and in the neighbor and, and, and affecting the neighborhoods. It's a it's a it's a terrible problem. The banks have finally, I think, begun to figure out. That, that the present value of that loan as modified can be very much higher than the present value of the loan going through all the way through a foreclosure. We don't solicit any clients. Our clients all come to us. Our clients find us places like, like, like your website, they find us uh, on, on the internet, they find us by reputation. Um, and that's really how it should be. Because one of the things we do here is we sue these modification scammers because there are a lot of out-of-state law firms um, and others, non-lawyers, or people pretending to be lawyers, or implying that they're lawyers, or saying they're working with lawyers, who will take you know three, five, ten thousand dollars of, of of homeowners' money and never actually step in and defend the case in court. So you need to have a lawyer that that's licensed in Ohio that can defend the case in court uh, or whatever state you live in, because because otherwise you're at risk of getting taken advantage of, and it's hard to tell the difference between the two. So the sooner you get to us after those people get to you, the better. You know, what we don't want are people who have been ripped off by these people and then have huge damages because the case, their house has already been sold, and they thought that the, you know, that the, the bogus law group out of Arizona was defending them. Everybody's situation, everybody's case is very fact-specific and fact-driven. So, so part of the reason you hire a lawyer is to sort through those things. We also do Chapter 13 bankruptcies for clients. We will refer people out for Chapter 7 bankruptcies. And the reason is we view that as kind of one of the arrows in our quiver. It's one of the tools we have. In Ohio, because judicial foreclosure takes so long, that as a tactical matter, if, if a bankruptcy is, is a possibility, we want to either maybe do it after, the, after we resolve the foreclosure, and because then we'll have a better idea of what the financial picture is going to look like in a Chapter 13. Um, or if we lose out in court, then you can file a Chapter 13 bankruptcy or a Chapter 7 and get a stay. Once we get the first mortgage addressed and modified potentially, uh, with a reduced principal in some cases, we'll then go to the second mortgage holder. And we can go to them and say, hey, what, what about 10 cents on the dollar on this second mortgage? And I can't tell you the number of times that we've just been able to write a check and, and that's gone. The other thing that people need to know is that is that one of the con conditions for filing a judicial foreclosure in Ohio is that the lender is no longer allowed to take payments from you. So part of what we do to make it easy for clients to defend themselves is that we have our clients put a reasonable mortgage payment into our trust account every month. Now that money is available to help us use to, to litigate the case if that's what we have to do. It's available to put down into uh, reducing the principal on the loan and trying to work out a modification, making a, a down payment on a modification. Um, or in many cases, we'll get through the process. Oftentimes these modifications, as they're coming out now, don't require a big down payment. And we've gotten through six or eight months of litigation, worked out a good deal with the, with the bank, and we write a check back to our client for, for the money that's in, in, our, in our trust account. So it's, it's the client's money, but it, 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 it solves a couple of things. One is that we're able to go to the bank and say, look, my client's been paying every month. I can show you the checks. Um, and so, you know, if you tell me they can't muster this money, I'm telling you they can. And frankly, it helps me know that. So that when I go to the bank and ask them to modify the loan, I have some confidence that the client's going to actually be able to do it. But here's the beauty of it. If you're putting $1,000 a month in our trust account, which, you know, for a, for a hundred or $100,000 house is about what your mortgage payment's going to be, with taxes and insurance included, you know, over the course of 18 months, you've got $18,000 set aside. If, you, if they're going to fight you to the end, you can fight it to the end. And by the way, every moment that you're paying, putting that money in my trust account, you got a place to live. So you, and if you don't do it, you're gonna to have to pay housing costs someplace else. So it makes sense for you, if, and, and we're much happier when we don't have to spend that money litigating, but we can use it to either help the client get relocated or help the client um, you know, start off fresh in, the new, in their new situation. P people are embarrassed about being foreclosed on or being in default on their mortgage. Um, I've had situations where the husband 
uh, who's responsible for the bills, calls us, and I find out into the conversation that he hasn't told his wife, uh, or vice versa. Um, facing up to that is hard. People don't want to admit to their family that they've let them down. And, and, and the truth is, given what's happened over the last five years, the, the fact is that there are very few clients that walk through this door that are solely responsible for the default on their mortgage. They've lost a job, they've had a significant medical situation with no health insurance, the, 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 the value of their house has dropped literally like a rock. You know, some houses in the Cleveland area have gone from, from half a million to two hundred or $150,000 uh, literally overnight. Part of my ability to pick myself up off the ground and build this law practice and, and, and go back to work representing consumers has been inspired by the incredible tenacity and persistence and love for family that my clients my clients have. And, and you know what? Some people are home thinking, well, I love my family, I'm going to keep this from them. But really, the heroes are the people that stand up and figure something out and do something about it. And people just need to know that there's, there's no shame in this and there's, and there's the opportunity to really put things back on track. And, and we've seen it over and over and over again. Sometimes things are over, sometimes they end. Some things come way to begin again. You can send us an email. Um, our website is danlaw.com. Um, and you can go on danlaw.com and fill out a little form and we'll call you right back. Uh, or you can call us. Within 24 hours, somebody from this office is going to call you back, even on the weekend. I don't think anybody should have to hire a lawyer, um, a pay a lawyer that they haven't met or that they haven't decided that they want to hire to actually litigate the case. So. We're happy to meet with people for free or have a phone call or, or, or a Skype conversation with them for free. Um, and then we send a retainer agreement out. And our retainer agreement is detailed. It's several pages long. It tells, us, it tells people exactly what we're going to do, what our hourly rates are, how we work, and how we, and how we bill.